Welcome back everyone. My name is Cody Ryan. As per a viewer's request today, we're going to be discussing how I sharpen my axes and maintain those in the fields and the most efficient method of doing so. So come along with us. I'm not going to go too in depth on blade geometries. I do have a, another video and I will link that in somewhere up here. Uh, that goes a little more in depth about knives, still applies to axes. However, I do want to touch a little bit on blade geometry. So this is my custom axe that I love to death. And this is more of a bushcraft axe because of the blade geometry. You can see it this way. It's a thinner profile, doesn't have so much of an obtuse um, edge to it. So the wider it is, the better it would be at splitting through wood. The thinner is more uh, bushcraft tasks that you would need around the camp. However, it's kind of a happy medium in between and it'll do most things that a heavy ax would and all things that a smaller hatchet would. So this would be a bushcraft forest ax. Moving up. I keep that one razor sharp because of the smaller tasks that I need to do. This would be more of a felling ax because of that angle again, a lot heavier, not something I would want to hike out and carry in my pack. So this kind of bridges the best of both worlds. That being said, let's get into the sharpening. I keep all my axes razor sharp. However, I do have an ax here that is my loner ax and we'll get a close up on the edge. It is beat to crap. So let's put an edge back on that right now. The secret to efficient knife sharpening is this right here. This is a bastard file. This is gonna be a little bit cringy to watch, but I'm going to take the file and run it directly across the ax blade. Again, move your fingers, don't slice those off because I need to wear that profile down and get all them chips out and make it a flush ax head again. And we're almost there. Go to one more, this side. Now that that is the dullest ax that you've ever seen, you can see how all those divots and chips are now out of the blade and it's a flush new beard. After defacing the front blade of my axe, I'm not going to worry too much about geometry. I'm going to eyeball it. People, they measure it in degrees. I don't know what this one is, but I know what I want it to look like. And it's obviously because of the thin profile. Again, not going to be felling any trees. Uh, it's not going to do too much bushcraft work, but it's going to be an all-around, all-purpose axe. So I'm going to have the angle match exactly what I want. That would probably be like a felling wedge. That would be more sharp bushcraft, but not more, uh, less of a durable edge. So I'm going to go somewhere in between, and I'm going to keep my fingers out of the way. You'll see why, because I scrape off the skin all the time if your hands are in the way gripping it here you'll have no knuckles left at the end of this so keep your fingers flush and then i'm just going to go in one direction and you'll feel it biting and this removes a lot of material i'm going to work down this side and then i'm going to go opposite see if i can do this without hitting the mic here. Same thing, find that angle. See, there's a little. 
So I'm gonna do this an indefinite amount of times. You can kind of see where I'm removing the metal and it's starting to become shiny. And then once I work out all these chips, then I'll show you the next process. So now that I have my blade relatively reprofiled and all of the chips out of it, I can feel a large burr on one side. So what that is, is I'm filing the metal to a very fine thin point and whichever way I am pushing against to sharpen, that little metal is folding over on the opposite edge of the apex. So I'm gonna sharpen it this way. My burr is going to form on this side. Conversely, I sharpen it the opposite way. The burr kind of wants to do this dance back and forth. So what I do at this point, it's already fairly sharp, minus that burr, is I start to lighten up and increase the angle ever so slightly. Just to remove that burr. Feel it right here. And once that is removed, it is sharp, real sharp. So you don't need to go any further after this point. If you want to stay very uh, efficient and simple, lightweight, just carry a bastard file in your pack. You could just use this technique indefinitely. Again, it removes a large amount of metal, so be wary of that. But I'll show you how to hone this a little bit further. Next step. Next step is these, they're easy, no, not easy lap, DMT diamond sharpeners. I use diamond because I don't like to rub compound on things and I don't like to spit on my stones. I don't like to soak wet stones. Again, super efficient, easy, simple, carry it in your pack. Don't need to worry about it. Don't need to add water. Don't need to add oil. So I'm going to take the coarser of the two. Blue would be the coarsest. At this point, I'm going to make small light circles in typical axe sharpening fashion. And then I'm going to increase the angle, so I'll go flush with it, increase the angle, maybe you can see it here flush circles, increase, flush circles, increase, flush circles. And I'll repeat that process with the blue side, which is the courses of the four that I have. Go on to red, continuing on, I'll go with green. And the pink slash beige is a, it mimics a stropping. So I'll show you what that looks like when we're done with those four. As I'm going through all these stages from bastard file to diamond sharpening and honing, I'm looking in the light for consistent scratch patterns. And all that means is if you bounce it off the light, the light will um, show you your mistakes. So you're not gonna be able to see it in this particular lighting, but I'll try my best to explain it. Uh, your it is what it is. It's consistent scratch patterns and you'll see flat or dull spots shine back at you and you don't want those. So you just want a consistent consistency across the length of the blade. That's what you're looking for in every single step of the way. So we finished with the diamond sharpener honing it. Again, anything past the bastard file, you can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, in my opinion, other than knocking off that burr is overkill. So again, you can just carry this. It's not super lightweight. So you might not want to add more sharpening components to your system. Um, however, again, you just want to knock that burr off. Something light to do that for you. Uh, now it's razor sharp. Again, way overkill for an ax. You don't want a felling axe razor sharp, but I like things sharp. So I'm going to show you that right now. So 
So all I'm doing here, since I obviously don't have enough room to be swinging axes, is I'm trying to focus the point and drive it. It takes a lot of accuracy, but the point into the wood, which will then split it. It's just another technique. So now, let's just create some shavings. So again, takeaways. Your thinner geometry is going to cut better, but going to be less robust of an edge. Let's see if we can, after doing all that, still razor sharp, shaves. That's where I like to keep my axes. And that is how I keep my axes in the fields with, let's see here, a diamond sharpener and a bastard file. These diamond sharpeners also are used for my knives, so you could add a shopping kit to it, but to save weight, this works just as well. This has been Cody Ryan with When the Lights Go Out. Until the next video, all you guys take care. I hope you're staying safe. Please like, share, subscribe if you will, and I'll catch you on the next episode. See you everyone.